Hey folks, what's going on? It's Ryan and I am joined here by EA Sports' Peter Moore. Peter, how you doing? I'm doing great, Ryan. How are you? I am uh, excellent. Nervous as hell, but excellent. Uh, why, why would you be nervous? <laughs> well, you're, you're Peter Moore, man. Oh, yeah. You're the man. Yeah, well, that, that lasts as long as until I get home and my wife reminds me that it's time to put the trash out. Well, we're here at the uh, EA Sports season opener. Right. You're showing off kind of all, all the spring offerings that yep. EA Sports has going on. Uh, how do you feel about, about what EA Sports is, is showing here today? First of all, we've got a lot of great stuff on the Wii, yeah. in particular today, and, and of course that's a focus for us. I think we're equally excited the fact we can be here in March and so show, show so much stuff, none of which is NCAA football, Madden, NHL, NBA, and still give you a full four or five hours of looking at gameplay. So. It's starting to feel like it's a new EA Sports and starting to feel like we're really broadening our portfolio in a positive way. How does the EA Sports approach to those games differ from something like uh, uh, NBA or NFL? Well, you know, they are big games. When we think about the opportunity for tennis, for example, which, uh, unlike maybe a Madden, allows us to really globalize our business. Um, compound that with the Wii Motion Plus uh, right. for both tennis and Tiger. Um, we'll be shipping both games on June 16th, and our hope is that uh, the Wii Motion Plus is coming shortly thereafter. Uh, both games, regardless when it comes, both games will be compatible with the Wii Motion Plus. Um, Fight Night is once every two or three years, as you know, and it's sure. always exciting for us, and this is the year for round four. And then EX Sports Active, I think, of all of the things we're showing today, is the most um, compelling new thing we have. It's risky. It's not a consumer we're used to talking to. Right. Let's call it a mid-30s woman. Um, not somebody that's usually in the core uh, elements of the demographics of EA Sports consumers. But uh, at the same time, it, it, I think it's not only a new game, it's a brand new platform for what we're doing. For you, what is it that, that sets EA Sports Active apart from Wii Fit? I, I would say it's less of a response than a tremendous complement and supplement to the Wii Fit experience. Okay, sure. It's a very different fitness experience. Look, I, I was a PE teacher many lives ago. Right. And, and fully respect, and, and, and I, I'm very proud of the fact of what we're doing um, as per my opening remarks, a little bit will help the aura of video games being good for you rather than what we usually get in our world. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, and so I think, and I liken it to having spent a lot of time in Japan over my years and understanding the Eastern philosophy of fitness, which is more about coordination and balance and maybe more a holistic wellness. And the WeFit board does a tremendous job and millions of people can't be wrong with their purchase. Indeed. But, but the one thing we add is I think true cardiovascular workout, true aerobic workout, um, I'll call it Western fitness. And so it's a very different experience, as you've or I hopefully already seen, than what you would do with the Wii Fit board. You've been doing the 30-day challenge with yes, EA Sports Active. How's that been working for you so uh, far? Are you I, on uh, day four, day I, uh, three? No, I am uh, about two and a half weeks in. Oh, you're, you're deep yeah. in, excellent. So I, um, I know where my hamstrings are now. <laughs> I, I, I know where my gluteus maximus is. Those squats are a killer. Yeah. Um, and you know, I've compounded it as well and, and done um, a little bit more portion control. And I found that if I do that every day, the 30 day challenge, either at home or the office, and then, then just watch what I, I've dropped nine and a half pounds. Well, excellent. Yeah, I mean, just getting my, my metabolic rate up a little bit, which the workout, if you can do 25 minutes of it, really gets it going. There's a calorie counter in there. And then just balancing that as well with eating a little less uh, than I normally would eat. My wife's a great cook, it's very tempting. <laughs> um, I, I'm down, uh, I'm, I'll tell you, I was at 202, two and a half weeks ago. And I got on the old digital scale, which is a big improvement on the old analog scales. <laughs> it uh, does not lie. It does not lie to the tenth of a pound. And <laughs> I was like 191.4 this morning. So, nice. And I can attribute that to getting me in the rhythm, allowing me to personalize my workout, and getting the discipline of working out every day and just carving out that 25 minutes, which is all I need. Uh, is this something that if you see a lot of success uh, with this product on the Wii, is this something that EA Sports would consider bringing to other platforms? Well, yeah, I mean, but that will be up to how the other platforms would allow us to bring fitness to their console. And so we're, we're very hopeful uh, in the case of both the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3 that we're going to see in the not too distant future innovations in control. And by that, I mean using the controller less and maybe using your body more. And, um, you know, that won't be something that EA will be driving, but certainly you would hope, and I'm sure it's going on back at Sony and Microsoft headquarters, thinking about over the coming years, how they innovate in control mechanisms. And we'll be right where with them when they do that. Yeah, there's just some R&D department where they are banging their head against something crazy in both uh, those houses. Having worked for one of those companies, <laughs> I, can, I can tell you that I'm sure there is. From, from the perspective that I have, it seems like uh, Wii Motion Plus, the, the big thing that it has brought has been a greater level of just kind of fidelity to the movement. Uh, have you noticed, or is there anything beyond that fidelity that uh, 
that, that the Wii Motion Plus is bringing to this game? The key for me, having now played both tennis and Tiger Woods, has been that exactly that fidelity, the sensitivity that it recognizes real motion, what yeah. we're calling authentic sports motion, to down to the twist of the wrist. It knows that the Wii Remote is this way and that way. So whether you're hitting draws and fades in your golf shot, which you can now do, or whether you're using a topspin lob or a drop shot at the net, which you now do uh, in tennis, uh, I think it's important that it allows us then to elevate what is already a great experience with the remote to, for the, for the benefit of sports in particular, that sense of touch yeah. that you don't get right, right now uh, with the with the with the standard Wii remote. Well, particularly with with golf, you know, this is a sport where it's all down to just you know the slight turn of the wrist can make Absolutely. all the difference. So as we've all found out, those of us that swing a club, yeah, I mean, and and, and I have a lot of fun, and, and and Tiger in particular is our best-selling Wii game. Yeah, I mean, not not just EA Sports, EA's best-selling Wii game. Uh, but it's still a gross motor movement with the Ream Remote. What we wanted to do is be able to get that twisting of the wrist and, and, and really address the ball in a different way. And Motion Plus does that for us, and we're very excited for both games. Now, you, you mentioned uh, Grand Slam Tennis a little bit. Now, this is EA's first foray into tennis. Uh, what, what kind of inspired that? You know, uh, you have Virtua Tennis and, and Top Spin, I guess, have been pretty modest successes yeah. for, for 2K and for Sega, uh, but like, what, what, did, what did EA Sports see in that area? One of the biggest concerns I had when I first arrived 18 months ago is we really didn't feel globalized in our, in our game offerings. Right. I thought tennis had a huge opportunity um, to be a, a global platform for us in ways that FIFA currently is right now. Sure. Secondly, I'm a, I'm a big tennis fan. Uh, the ability to, I think, capture lightning in a bottle, Nadal versus Federer, feels like the old days of McEnroe versus Connors and Bjorn Borg and, and the golden era of tennis in those days of great players having real rivalries together right. and having two great players rather than, you know, in you know more recently just Federer. Now Nadal is coming in, you know, has given him a great chance. That was important for me. Thirdly, we knew Wii Motion Plus was eventually going to come. Right. And fourthly, I wouldn't have done the game unless we got Wimbledon in the game. I think probably the game that I'm most excited about, uh, Fight Night Round 4, uh, you know, Fight Night Round 3, at the time, one of the best looking games on any platform, in any genre, you know, it just, it was, it was a powerhouse. Uh, is there a lot of pressure on uh, uh, Round 4 to kind of like up the stakes on that? Like, how do you, how do you feel about how uh, Round 4 looks compared to the time period? When you've got something that looked as unbelievably phenomenal as, yeah. as, as Round 3, and I'll never forget it because I actually debuted the game at CES on stage with Bill Gates and Steve Ballmer. Right. And, you know, the game blew us away at Microsoft at that time. Uh, if you remember the shot and, of course, the blood flying everywhere, something that people just made them sit back in their chairs. I was one of those things where you saw it and you thought, that can't be that real. That can't be real. That can't be real. And then Until you actually you saw the, the game. game and yeah. And so the team, and this is why we give the team two, two and a half, three years to get the game right. The game as you're seeing here today is, is from a graphics point of view phenomenal. But like any great development team, the Fight Night team said, okay, let's take a really critical look at what we delivered with round three and what can we do better in round four. Physics is, is key. Right. And, and if there was things that we can self-criticize about round three, it was probably the inside game yeah. of having you know, punches that don't quite land. Making sure that that when you get inside, if you're if you're Ricky Hatton or if you're Mike Tyson in this case, um, you know you can get in there and you can pound away at what you're good at, which is that that hustling and bustling. You're not going to fight Ali at arm's length. No, you're going to get in close. You've got to get in close. Right. You've got to pin him up against the ropes and get in there. And Fight Night Round Three didn't quite deliver on that. The physics weren't quite. And the team will tell you this. So when, if you get the chance now, and the other thing, of course, Ryan, was getting Mike Tyson back in. Of course. And as a huge fight fan myself, as a kid who in England listened to not Muhammad Ali, but Cassius Clay yeah. on his transistor radio, uh -huh. when a big heavyweight fight was the biggest sporting event of the year, we wanted to bring that back. And, and I always wondered, if you put in for 15 rounds like the good old days, <laughs> Muhammad Ali in his prime, and I and Mike Tyson in his prime, who would win? And that's what we've got now with, with Fight Night Round 4. One of, one of the guys at Giant Bomb is a huge fan of SSX, the SSX games, SSX 3 specifically. Any chances of seeing SSX come back uh, in the near future? All I can say to you is we're constantly evaluating where we go with our lineup. SSX is one of the great games uh, that we always look at and say, should we do it again? Is the time right? 
how do we do it online? What platform would we do it on? Would I do it on the Wii Fit board? Right. All of those things. So, so in answer to your question, no. <laughs> no. But I, 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 the way you led up to it, never say never. How goes the uh, the Kurt Schilling uh, field goal challenge? Oh, are thank you, you. Are you still are you still uh, sending games? This to This is kids? another. Yes, I am. Okay. I'm at 42 yards and and holding right oh. now. That's but, good. I mean, that's damn good. I know. I could. I, I do remember many decades ago smacking it over 50. Maybe my memory is clouded, or maybe my legs aren't what they used to be. Yeah, I'm still committed to get there. Uh, in the meantime, Kirk continues to get his games, and Kirk continues to blog about the fact that he gets his games. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, one final question, Peter. Uh, we're, you're calling all of the sports games uh, that EA's putting out this year 10. Now, we've, we've had a lot of conversations in the office about this. Uh, what was what was the discussion like to, to come to 10 rather than 010 or 2010? We decided we had a syllable limit on what we could ask consumers to talk about. Okay. So whether it was Tiger Woods PGA Tour Golf 2010 or whether it was uh, NFL Madden Football do you, have, you have to put some of those words we in. We have some mandatory yeah. things in there uh, for the Xbox 360, PS3, and Wii. Um, we decided, you know, it wasn't a long conversation, quite frankly. It, it was like, what do we do? Yeah, economy is good. Uh, we realize we're not confusing them that it's not 1910. Certainly. Right? We but hope it, that our consumers... Is it the 10th game? Is it the 10th no, time? No, it's, it's... Hey, people will soon get used to it. <laughs> Reminds me of the days when we tried to figure out what to call our Sega games, and we, it was 2K. It was year 2000. Oh, right. We just said, uh, call it 2K. You got 2K1. It's kind of stuck. <laughs> so, Indeed. Yeah. Uh, it's 10. Yeah. Our games will be 10. Economy jumps off the tongue a little better. Bigger things to worry about. Fair enough, sir. Okay. Well, Peter, thank you so much for Brian, your time. Brian, my Appreciate pleasure. It. Okay. And uh, that's going to do it for us here. Uh, you can learn more about these games on GiantBomb.com.